Hello and welcome to the FYI podcast. That's for your ignorance. My name is Zach Qureshi and today we're going to briefly talk about the climate crisis, what it is, what we've done about it in the past, and what might happen in the future. So stay tuned. Since about 1800, the global mean temperature has increased dramatically, so much so that scientists sometimes call the line graph depicting this data the hockey stick due to the way the sharp increase resembles the angle that a hockey stick has. This increase coincides in history with the Industrial Revolution, suggesting that this increase was caused by human activity, specifically the release of pollutants in the air from burning fossil fuels. When fossil fuels like gasoline or coal are burned, greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide are released into the atmosphere. These gases are called greenhouse gases because of the greenhouse effect, which is when heat from the sun enters the atmosphere, is reflected by the Earth's surface, and trapped in the atmosphere by these gases, causing the Earth's temperature to increase. This phenomenon was first documented in the late 19th century, but there was little general concern until the 1970s. In 1970, President Richard Nixon established the EPA, or the Environmental Protection Agency, in order to oversee matters of conservation and enforce regulations protecting the environment. Since then, there have been many governmental and intergovernmental organizations formed formed dedicated to the study and prevention of climate change. In 2019, a UN panel of scientists said that by 2030, irreparable damage will have been done to the climate. Climate change can cause ice caps to melt, raising the sea level and threatening species that depend on that ice or on the coastline. Additionally, climate change causes weather to be more irregular. In 2017, former President Trump withdrew the United States from the Paris Climate Agreement, a treaty holding nations accountable for their effects on the environment. This was one of many steps former President Trump made to deregulate and defund the fight against climate change in the United States. The Trump administration and the Republican Party posit that the government should not be involved in the free market, and therefore environmental regulations would hurt the economy. Additionally, conservatives value the role of of the multi-billion dollar oil and gas industry above the supposed dangers of the climate crisis. In 2016, Trump even called climate climate change a hoax perpetrated by the Chinese to hurt American industry. During his four-year term in office, Trump disbanded and cut funding from several environmental agencies, deregulated emissions, and signed an an executive order allowing the controversial Keystone XL pipeline to continue construction. In 2019, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Senator Ed Markey sponsored a series of legislation known as the Green New Deal, The name is a reference to President Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal, which created jobs for many Americans through large-scale public works projects, including the construction of the Hoover Dam and the Golden Gate Bridge. Similarly, the Green New Deal would create jobs through public works projects, such as the construction of a more sustainable energy infrastructure. The aim of the Green New Deal is to reduce economic inequality while creating renewable energy sources in the United States. The Green New Deal did not pass in the Senate, but many Democrats continue to advocate for its implementation. In the 2020 presidential election, one of President Joe Biden's campaign promises was that he would work on transitioning the country to more renewable energy and that he would fight against climate change. President Biden did not endorse the Green New Deal, but has enacted several executive orders that would protect the environment and fight climate change. As early as his first week in office, the president signed executive orders to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement, revoke the approval for construction of the Keystone XL pipeline, and to reverse the deregulation of environmental policy by former President Trump. While President Biden has taken steps to put the nation back on track in the fight against climate change, many climate activists accuse him of being too moderate on the issue, preferring a more serious approach. With Democrats controlling both chambers of Congress as well as holding the presidency, it's possible we'll see more climate climate resolution in the future. However, some on the left have accused this presidency and the Democratic Party of catering too much to the center, and some Democrats from southern states depend on the votes of workers in the fossil fuel industry. So it's possible that, even when in the majority in Congress, the Democratic Party will decide not to act. Some private corporations are moving towards being more sustainable and eco-friendly. However, more sustainable energy and less harmful materials are generally more expensive, so there's little profit incentive for a company to go green. Without being able to rely on the public or private sector, the future of the climate seems bleak. However, with increased awareness of the issue, people can band together to boycott companies that are egregiously polluting or choose to patronize companies that are more eco-friendly. If public knowledge is high and people are people care about what companies are doing to the environment, we become it will become less profitable to pollute. In that same vein, if people are educated and passionate about the environment, they can elect officials that will enact change or pressure their current representatives to act. While the future of the climate is uncertain, the more people know and care about this issue, the more likely it is that it can be solved. So that's all we have this week, just a real short episode uh, just about the environment. Um, But thanks for listening. Um, I've been Zach Koreshi. Come back next time. As always, peace in the Mideast.